the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I don't want to go. You ever said that before? I don't want to do this. Maybe it's school. Maybe it's work. Maybe a social function of some kind. I'm too tired. It's too hard. I'm not interested. Or the old go-to. I just don't want to. You've probably heard it. You've probably said it. Or maybe just felt this way at some point in your life. You want to stay in bed. You just stay home. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to go to school. Whatever else might find its way onto your schedule and the list of things that you have to do on any given day. Now, I hope it's not a mindset that you wrestle with regularly because it is by no means a positive outlook or a healthy view of going about the vocations into which God has placed you at this time in your life. We heard in detail the events John recorded for us surrounding Jesus' suffering and death. Last night, we examined Jesus washing the disciples' feet, a detail John provides, but the other Gospels do not. One detail John does not include in his Passion account is what we will examine now. In Matthew's account, the three hours that Jesus spent on the cross until his death, we see that I don't want to. It's not in our Lord, of course, and not even in the others who were involved with or were witnessing his death. Many of the people who witnessed these events were in full favor of what was taking place in front of them. Before Jesus was nailed to the cross, the chief priests scorned him and rejected him plainly. Pontius Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? Their idolatrous response points to their blindness to the words of Moses and the prophets. Matthew says, they said, we have no king but Caesar. Caesar, the Roman emperor, was falsely attributed status as a god. Here the Jewish religious leaders are appealing to him rather than recognizing that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God and the savior this broken world. The Roman soldiers that made up the four-soldier death squad who nailed him to the cross, they held no objections to their work. They divided his clothing, offering a further step in the humiliation that is crucifixion. And yet Jesus' nakedness serves as the solution to the shame that Adam and Eve felt after their fall into sin. Their attempts to cover themselves after their eyes were opened did not compare to the garments of skin that God gave them, showing them from the very beginning the need for blood, a blood sacrifice to cover sin. Jesus, God himself in our human flesh, offers his body, sheds his blood, fulfilling the promise first delivered of the one who would come through Eve's offspring to crush the serpent's head. Others walking by mocked him as he made his way to his last breath. They wanted to do it, and so they did it. They said, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. The chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, they joined in as well. They said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. It's here in Matthew's gospel that we finally find that I don't want to mentality. He writes, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. As the Son of God suffered and died on the cross, the sun he put in the sky 
refused to do its job. It was on the fourth day of history that the sun was put to its task of providing light and warmth for all life on Earth. And while there is certainly some room to move around, at least according to current scientific findings, the position we hold on this planet with respect to the distance to the sun is the only reason we are able to live here. The surface temperature of Mars, negative 85 degrees Fahrenheit, while on Venus, due to its cloudy, gassy, and toxic atmosphere, we find a surface temperature of 867 degrees Fahrenheit. The lives we live here naturally cannot be sustained on either of these two closest planetary neighbors of ours. God knew what he was doing when he put us where we are. And he continues to provide and offer all that we need to support this body and life. But on this day, Good Friday, which the church observes together throughout the world, in particular for three hours beginning at what we call noon, when the sun is at its highest point, we see in this description, it didn't want to. It refused to shine. While similar to the thick darkness that covered Egypt in the ninth plague, this is the only time such a solar event is described. And though we are counting day, down the days to a total solar eclipse, what Matthew writes for us here is far different and far more significant. It is forecast that the sun's light will be blocked out by the moon ten days from now, but this will be visible only in a select portion of the world. It will also last for only three to four minutes. Nowhere near the three hours the sun did not shine during Jesus' time on the cross. Though on that day, Good Friday, the sun took the I don't want to approach to its work that day, we know the Son of God did not. He endured the cross and its shame, the violence and the mockery hurled upon him, and there on the cross he went to work. He went to work bringing about our forgiveness. He did this because it is his desire to bring you into his loving presence and eternity, where his face will shine on you and bring you favor. His promise is yours, and it is yours to live out. Don't take that I don't want to approach. It's yours to live out and share as you reflect his bright, shining love against the darkness of this broken world. He did the work, and he completed it to prove that he wants to have you with him in eternity. All the work that went into it was worth it to him. And all of that work proves your worth to him as well. Amen. We sing together hymn 438.